webcams kind of suck. In this video, I'll show you how to go from this to this. Pretty cool, right? And you thought he was cute before. Look at this peacock tell me he's broke. <laughs> Let's talk about why webcams kind of suck and why even the most expensive webcams create a meh result. The problem is the form factor. As you can see, a webcam is a very small device. And because it's so small, it has a very small image sensor. An image sensor is the part of the camera that captures the light and then produces the image or the video. Real cameras generally have a 35mm image sensor. This is like the golden standard of reference of the size of an image sensor. Webcams, however, have a much smaller image sensor because they are such small devices. But let's have a look at what this difference actually uh, results in. So when you have a look at this image, this is the 35mm film reference point and this is the output of that image. So it captures a whole bunch of data and a lot of light. So now when you have a look at the small square here, this is the image sensor of the webcam. So um, the difference between the 35 millimeter film and the one from the webcam we call the crop factor. So for webcams generally this crop factor is like 7 or 7.2, something like this. As you can see this produces a very zoomed in image and this is the issue of the webcam form factor. So they found a clever way to get around this. Without this clever trick that they come up with, basically a webcam would be looking up my nose right now. That's how zoomed in it is. Like a normal 18 millimeter lens for an SLR camera is the equivalent of like 126 millimeters on such a small image sensor. So what they need to do is zoom out. So to cover the distance that a webcam is normally from your face, like around 40 centimeters or two feet, it actually needs to zoom out by a whole lot. And to do that is to use a fisheye lens. So a fisheye lens would actually zoom out and then you, it would see more of the image and then they just crop it so it looks like a 76 um, degree angle um, out of the camera. Um, they would just crop it to make the image look good. However, when you go to such lengths to zoom out and zoom in and do all of this stuff, the image quality just goes down and down. And also the small image sensor has a lot less possibility to, to catch light. So there's not much exposure and there's also not much depth of field. So this is why webcams kind of suck. But I have a way to at least make it look a little bit better. Because what you're looking at right now is just my webcam with a bunch of good light, a bit of settings tweaking and it's kind of passable it's not the best but it's fine whoa this looks pretty bad right i just turned off some lights and i changed the post processing settings in the, the application that records this video so because of the image sensor that is so small it has a lot of issues catching light so if you don't have the ability to catch much light you have to do stuff in post processing to make it look better so there's this auto exposure setting and auto iso settings to make the image look grainier but because it's grainier it can actually show you more of the picture so you can see the person in the picture but you can see it's a very shitty look Let's talk about my light setup or yours maybe in the future. So if you don't have many options, just find the biggest light you have and put it behind your camera and blast your face. Because of the small image sensor that cannot really catch much light, blasting your face is by far the best way to actually show your face well on a camera. So I actually have a bit of a more fancy setup that I found out about by doing some research and it's not that hard to figure out. And let's have a look at it. So um, this is the three point light setup. So I'm using a key light, which is a bit on the side of me, which is the most strong light with the biggest intensity that lights my face. Then there's the fill light that lights the other side of my face so I don't have too many shadows. And then there's a hair light, or they call this a backlight uh, or a rim light sometimes, that lights you from the side. So to put you a bit more in the foreground to separate you from the background. So let's have a look what it means to turn on some lights and how that changes the perception of the webcam. So now um, I'm using Philips Hue, so I have a phone, so I'm just clicking some buttons. So this is my default light setup. As you can see, I just darkened everything and there's a bit of colored light behind me. You don't need these colors, I just use them for fun. 
Um, so let's start with my key light. Let's find the button. There it is. Wow. You see, that blasts. This is a very intense light that really lights up my face and casts a little bit of shadow behind uh, my chin here. Just this stuff. Um, then let's open my fill light. So the fill light actually lights the other side of my face and now it's a bit more even. And now let's change the hair light. So this is a light that I actually made blue because I just like to have a blue light. It can be any color, it doesn't really matter. But this separates me a little bit from the background and it also um, makes the shadows behind me a bit less harsh. Um, so this is my base setup. Of course, it's not the final product yet, but it's getting there. And it's already like 10 times better than not having any lights. We're almost there, I promise. We just have to change some settings and post-process the feed, shall we say. And that's basically how um, you get your, your final image. So let's open the settings and here we go. My camera is a Logitech. It's a Brio, which is the most expensive one they make. But it's not even much better than the other one I had, which was a, a bunch cheaper. Um, goes to show that webcams just don't get much better unless... They really start to change the game, but I don't think they will because there's just not enough market for it. You want to spend more money? Just buy a real camera, right? So let's have a look at those settings. Um, so these are the properties that come with that, with that Logitech camera. I suggest not to touch anything. The only thing you should do is make sure you don't have the backlight compensation, no gain, because we have good light. We don't need all that stuff. And also fix your white balance to the same number every time. So don't auto white balance because it will do a whole bunch of stuff based on, let's say if your screen flickers lighter, it will change your white balance. And you don't always want that. You want it to be fixed so you know what you're dealing with. So then when you look at the camera control, um, don't touch exposure. Exposure is truly, well, I don't know Logitech. Whenever I touch this, either my frame rate goes to 10 and everything is shit or my image looks like crap. Just, just don't touch much of it, right? So um, keep it at auto and also don't turn on low light compensation because we have a bunch of light on us, right? There's no need for compensating in post process. Next to changing the settings, we also have filters. These are overlays over your video that post process the signal to make it look better. So as you can see now, I'm using a color correction and a LUT. Well, they're both off. So this is just the webcam and blasting lights at my face. As you can see, let's start with color correction. I'm only changing a small amount and it really gives you um, a much better look. So let's have a look how it looks when I turn on the color correction. You see, that's a pretty big difference. Um, actually, um, it makes it a little bit more dark, more contrasty, more visual, more popping, whatever you want to call it. It's a creative term, right? So um, just use these to your own opinion change it up a little bit um, have a look at don't, don't change too much because it will look like crap um, just change them slightly so then we have LUTs a LUT is generally used um, in film it's to color grade your whole movie basically to give it like an extra cinematic look stuff like that so currently it's off but let me just turn it on um, and I'll show you what that looks like. It's not a big change, but it makes it a bit better, right? So now um, the look is it's more faded, a little bit more cinematic, let's say. So when you have a look and I add more, it looks like crap. So don't do that. So I'm always at like 30% on each LUT. Um, I'll show you what it looks like if I change some other things. So LUTs are basically just images that the, the software understands and applies. So currently I'm using this one. So let's just maybe use this one. If I put it at 100%, it actually kind of grayscales me. Or if I want something that pops much more, you see now there's a lot of colors. It's kind of shitty, but it works, right? And there's a bunch of different packs of LUTs you can buy for free or and buy for free download for free so this is like a film default and it's always better around like in my opinion 30 percent is the best so let's put it back of where i was which is this one and this one i like the most you can safely stop here and be quite happy with the output of your webcam now it looks decent enough but i wanted more and I actually wanted something that's not really possible with webcams. I wanted a shallow um, depth of field 
or uh, a blurry background. Anything professional that you see um, that's filmed with a proper camera on either YouTube or on the television or anything, it has this really nice blurry effect. I wanted this, but due to the form factor of the webcam and the small image sensor and all of that stuff we talked about, it's just not possible. But there's AI. You know, there are some programs that actually detect my face and my body and then cut me out of the background and then blur the background for me. This is pretty fun. I think Skype even tried to do it, but it's really shitty. So I bought this app called Xplat, Xsplit VCam. Um, shitty thing to say, sorry. Um, it's pretty cool. So let's have a look how that works. Um, here you go. So um, actually, there it is, the Xsplit VCam. This is basically a proxy between my the image that my Logitech gives me and um, the program that I record in. So right now I can actually configure the video. When I click configure, I actually go to XSplit rather than to my Logitech settings. And as you can see, I can actually remove the background. Um, right now this doesn't work super well because I'm lighting myself with blue light and it just doesn't really know what to do with that. So if I made that white, I could get this better. But for the purpose of what I use it for, it's actually kind of fine. And I go into the original background again, but you can actually blur it out. So the blue light is still doing some weird stuff, but if I just put it low enough, like around 10%, this blur actually looks pretty decent. So have a look at this. Right now you cannot really see the guitar brands anymore and the books are a little bit blurry. So I'm popping much more because my background is blurry. So um, this is just this extra thing, you have to pay for it and it's not real. It's just AI trying to, you know, mimic real life. And over time this will get better obviously, but probably over time I'll be getting a better camera if I want to do more of this. Um, thanks for watching. Um, I know it was a pretty long video with a lot of details, but you know, it's, it's pretty cool that if you do some research you can get your camera to look good. Um, even when it's a shitty webcam. You just need to know what you're doing. Um, because this is one of my first videos and I've never really done this before. I just did some research and decided to do this. Please leave some comments or feedback or questions or whatever because I'm probably doing it pretty wrong if you consider there are people that use cameras every day. Anyways, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time.